Let's go and take a look, guys. Um, these are, again, what we call literal equations. And so basically, again, guys, you know, the idea of solving an equation, doesn't matter if it has multiple variables or not, is you know, in this case, we're looking to solve for x. So that means we're looking for x equals or something equals x, right? But the main idea is we need to get x by itself, correct? So x has some things happening to it. And you can see in this example, we have x being multiplied by 3 and x being subtracted by 1. So if you remember from Algebra 1, our purpose was to undo everything that's happening to x, so therefore it can be isolated or all by itself. So basically, we need to undo the operations, right? which we call our inverse operations, the opposite operations. We need to apply the reverse order of operations, kind of like the reverse PEMDAS right? Um, for solving. And therefore, we also need to use the properties of equality. So a lot of things are going on, but that was just a lot of math speak. Hopefully, you guys recognize if I want to solve for x, we're going to undo subtraction first by adding a 1 to both sides. right? Because remember, PEMDAS is multiply before you add and subtract. Right? So we're doing the reverse. You undo addition and subtraction before you undo multiplication and division. Right? So therefore, we have y plus 1 equals 3x. Then I can divide by 3, and I get y plus 1 over 3 is equal to x. Now, that works. It's equal to x. A lot of times, we don't really like it written like this. So sometimes, we'll use that reflexive property, and we'll just say, well, that's the same thing as this. But then, FYI, we're going to have that test, right? What if it's a multiple choice question? What if that's not your answer? What if your answer looks like this? You say, that's fine. You can distribute. That 3 is dividing into the y, and it's dividing into the 1. Sometimes we don't write division of 3. Sometimes we write this as a um, 1 third y plus 1 third. Right? Maybe the problem's written like this. Okay, so the other point that I want to bring to you is, yeah, we just solved the problem. Like, yeah, there's the answer. If you give me this answer on your test on a free response portion, that's fine. But I also want you guys to be aware of, look at all of these equivalent answers. I don't want you to get confused and say, oh, here's my answer, and then I can't find my answer choice because it's written in one of these new notations. But these are all equivalent equations. Okay? Yes, which one do you not feel is equivalent? Or which one do you want me to explain? Everybody's good with these? These are all different ways the same answer could be written. Okay, So that's why we want to make sure we understand that. Typically, we don't, a lot of times, we don't write division. We want write it as a multiplication by a fraction. All right, so let's move on to the next one. So the next one is we have an x inside of parentheses. Well, we can't solve for an x inside of the parentheses. We've got to get rid of the parentheses. Right? We're trying to get this. There's no parentheses there. So we've got to undo the parentheses. So we've got to think, why do we have these parentheses? Why are the parentheses here? Well, the parentheses are because we're multiplying by 3. So how do I undo that? There's two ways, actually. We could, we could just distribute it. right? If we distribute the 3, doesn't that get rid of the parentheses? So that's one option. Or what else could we do in this example? We could just actually divide by 3. So you could divide by 3 on both sides. Right? There's actually two options in this case. Um, and so whatever option you cho chose or choose to do, you'll see that you're going to get the same answer. And then over here, now in this example, you could probably say that just dividing by the 3 is the easier one. But do you guys see how these are equivalent? Right? I just divide 3 on both sides for there. Right? Do you guys see how they're equivalent? Yes, yes, no? OK. Um, technically, though, when we're going to be doing problems today in class, this is actually going to be our preferred method. And you'll see why it's going to be a preferred method. But in this example, this was perfectly fine. Um, and then last but not least, guys, we have parentheses around the 3x. So why do we have parentheses around the 3x? What is that helping preserve? Anything? Do we really need those parentheses? No. So the important thing is, you know, a lot of times when we were applying operations from last class period, when we're plugging one function into another function, we use parentheses to represent that you know, plugging in. However, it's also important to see there's nothing that those parentheses are actually needed. Right? So you might have a problem or you might be working on something where you, know, you use parentheses to represent plugging in, and then you get to this point, but in real, you realize that this 
doesn't, like, you don't need the parentheses, so we can just drop them. You can't drop these parentheses. If you drop these parentheses, you get 3x minus 1. Well, that is not the same as that, right? So you can't just drop parentheses. But in the exact, in last one, there's nothing multiplied by it, so you can, right? There's, the parentheses are not preserving anything for us. Does that make sense? Or grouping anything special. And then obviously, to save ourselves some time, you can pick whichever answer you want over there. OK? So that is your Algebra 1 review. Let's go ahead and 